Ellie? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, let me share my screen with you uh, to deliver my presentation today on elephants. Hope you can see my screen now. Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me for this interesting uh, discussion today. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for using those kind words to introduce me. Uh, let me start my presentation. Elephants, conservation and conflict mitigation and ongoing discussion. I would like to uh, divide my presentation into the following aspects. Elephants in Africa and Asia, elephants in Sri Lanka, uh, their distribution, social structure, elephants uh, are key stone species and human elephant conflict, mitigation strategies, elephant smuggling. Uh, finally, what we can do to conserve elephants. If we talk about the elephants, uh, we can uh, find uh, three uh, species of elephant across uh, the Africa and Asia. And they are Uh, actually, elephants are the largest uh, terrestrial animals and the largest herbivores on Earth, uh, limited to three species, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, when we come to the African savanna forests, um, African savanna elephants are there. They are called uh, Loxodonta africana. And when it comes to the uh, African uh, forests, thick uh, rainforest in Central Africa, uh, they are called Loxodonta cyclotes, or the African forest elephants. And in, when it comes to the um, Asian region, uh, we can find uh, Elephas maximus, or the Asian elephants. And uh, they are uh, in uh, uh, threatened with uh, global extinction. Uh, when we talk about the savanna elephants and the Asian elephants, they are listed as endangered species uh, in the European red list. And when it comes to the forest elephants in Africa, they are critically endangered. Uh, if we look at uh, the distribution of uh, African elephants, you can see in this map, uh, they are limited to very uh, uh, small or narrow um, home ranges in Africa, uh, particularly uh, south of the uh, Sahara Desert. They live in uh, 37 countries uh, south of the Sahara Desert. And African forest elephants uh, live in dense forest, rainforest of uh, Western uh, Central Africa. At the beginning uh, of the 20th century, uh, there were a few millennia, million of uh, African elephants, but unfortunately uh, today we have about uh, 450,000 uh, elephants uh, across these uh, 37 uh, countries in Africa. When it comes to Asia, uh, we, as we already mentioned, uh, Elephas maximus are there. Uh, they are divided into four subspecies called Asia Elephas maximus indicus. Uh, they live in India. And Elephas maximus maximus, uh, the subspecies uh, found in Sri Lanka. Elephas maximus sumatranus uh, live in uh, Sumatra, and the Borneo elephants are called as Elif Elephas maximus uh, borneensis. Uh, when we uh, look at uh, the distribution of uh, Asian elephants, uh, you can see in this map uh, in brown color, uh, they were found in a large uh, area uh, in China uh, from the north uh, and uh, to the towards the uh, Middle East countries uh, in uh, uh, west. And but unfortunately uh, now uh, they have been uh, extinct from uh, about ninety percent of their uh, past distant ranging countries, and they are uh, limited to very uh, small uh, portions of uh, Asia and uh, Southeast Asian countries, particularly in India, Sri Lanka, and some others. And uh, 
At, as the uh, second decade of the 21st century, Asian elephants uh, remain endangered across their range. And although not yet extinct uh, in any of 13 range states. In five countries, uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, Nepal, and Vietnam, uh, the number of wild elephants uh, in the entire country is less than 200 individuals. In another three countries, Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand, uh, it is uh, less than 1,000 individuals. And when it comes to the um, Indonesian, uh, Sumatra, and the Vietnam, elephants have recently crossed the uh, threshold to it become critically endangered. Here you can see the recent estimations of uh, elephant in uh, all uh, 13 uh, range countries in Asia. Uh, you can have see uh, that uh, there are about uh, 45,000 to 49,000 individuals in the wild and about 40, uh, about uh, 15,000 elephants are uh, in captivity. Uh, when we talk about the elephants, uh, I think it is better uh, to talk about uh, the, uh, the densities of uh, human and elephant uh, in, uh, in the countries where they live. On your uh, left-hand side, you can see uh, the uh, human densities in uh, different countries. Uh, at the bottom, you can see uh, Sri Lanka, India, and Bangladesh uh, has have the uh, highest densities of human. Uh, and when it comes to the uh, elephant uh, population or the density of elephant, you can see uh, the uh, Sri Lanka uh, that has the um, biggest uh, or the highest density of elephant uh, per uh, square kilometer. Then you can have uh, a sense uh, why the conflict in between human and elephants. When we talk about uh, Sri Lankan elephants, uh, we have a long lasting uh, association of the relationship between uh, elephants. Uh, when we talk about the elephants in Sri Lanka, this uh, moonstone uh, uh, play a very important uh, role. Uh, this is uh, found in Ampar uh, district, uh, we called Magul Mahavihare uh, in Lahugala area. Uh, this is belong to uh, Anuradhapur era. And when we uh, look at uh, it closely, here you can see a uh, man uh, behind uh, the elephant. It shows uh, the close relationship or the association between elephants and human uh, in the historic period. Uh, when we talk about the distribution of elephant uh, in Sri Lanka, Elephants are found over almost the entire dry zone in an area of approximately 60% of the island. And we have conducted the survey uh, by the Department of Wildlife Conservation in 2011. And we found about uh, 6,000 ele elephants uh, in our country at that time. Uh, that uh, amount or that, num that number is more or less similar to the um, individuals live in the country today as well. The major threat to elephant is in Sri Lanka is uh, habitat loss and fragmentation uh, through uh, conversion of uh, settlements and uh, permanent cultivations. We will discuss, discuss these things uh, in detail later. And Sri Lanka have a very close association with elephants uh, that extend uh, back to millennia. Uh, elephants' uh, motifs have been uh, widely used in Sri Lanka uh, art since uh, ancient time. In ancient, he ancient history, uh, captive elephants are uh, heavily uh, utilized for labor, war, and religious and cultural activities. Uh, you know now uh, the uh, SLA festival uh, or the candy uh, parahara season is uh, now. Uh, then you know uh, it is uh, elephants are playing a key role uh, in that Perahara and uh, these um, cultural festivals as well. Elephants hold a uh, 
central position in the country's uh, two main religions, uh, Buddhism and Hinduism, as well as in Sri Lankan culture. The elephant is uh, considered as a symbol of uh, physical and mental strength, intelligence, responsibility, good luck, and prosperity. But unfortunately, uh, most of the people in our country now they are considered as enemies or the pests. Here, the distribution of elephant in Sri Lanka, uh, Dr. Prathiviraj Pranandu uh, and the team have, conduct, uh, have conducted a survey uh, about the distribution of elephants uh, in uh, 2015, and they have published it in 2019 here on your um, Left hand side, you can see uh, the elephant distribution in our uh, small island in uh, 1960s. Uh, they lived in entire uh, dry, dry zone and some areas of the uh, wet zone as well. And when you come to the 2015, uh, they are again, they live almost all the areas uh, they have inhibited it in 1960s, but in some parts uh, they have um, uh, been uh, extinct from, from certain areas. Yeah, this, uh, you can see the, there are two colors. The uh, blue color area represents the areas where herds and the males are found. And the, lark, the, the light um, color uh, squares represent uh, where and the male elephants are um, they we can found only the male elephants and when we talk about the social structure of uh, elephants uh, it is uh, quite in interesting uh, to know uh, they are uh, two types uh, herds and the individual uh, bulls here you can see a herd of elephants uh, drinking uh, water in the reservoir uh, in somewhere uh, in dry zone, uh, they are consist of uh, females and uh, babies or the children. Actually, uh, elephant herds, elephants uh, social structure is uh, quite different from ours. Uh, in our families, uh, we have fathers and mothers and children, but unfortunately, or not actually the unfortunate, it's the social structure and natural nature gives them uh, that they uh, are lead, the herds lead by uh, females, not males. Then there's no dominant uh, role to play uh, in the elephant herd to a father or bull elephants. Uh, most of the <coughs> female elephants uh, like uh, grandmothers, aunts, uh, and uh, sisters, like uh, mothers, are there in an uh, elephant group or elephant herd with the children. Uh, when it comes to the children, uh, both um, males, boys and girls, or males and females are there. But uh, when the males um, come into the puberty, uh, they leave the herd and have become uh, isolated and they live uh, with along um, as uh, bull elephants. We called in Sinhalese, uh, we called Thani Aliya. And uh, sometimes they create uh, small uh, male groups, peer groups, and that is how uh, they live in the forest. And if we talk about the um, importance of elephant, uh, we know elephants are a key stone species. They play a vital role in forest regeneration and structural maintenance by uh, affecting a broad variety of ecological processes, other than earning money through the tourism activities in Sri Lanka, as you already know, a uh, lot of uh, tourists uh, from the foreign countries are visiting Sri Lanka uh, to see the elephants in the wild. And therefore, it's a uh, greater um, foreign income, greater way of foreign income generation. Other than that, uh, it, they are very important uh, in uh, the maintenance or the balance of the ecosystems where they live. When compared with other uh, pachyderms, mesohobivores, omnivores, and carnivores, elephants have huge impacts on anthropic processes, uh, such as 
actually if we talk about uh, tropic processes such as uh, uh, racing, uh, browsing and frugivory and uh, transport processes such as uh, seeds and nutrient uh, transportation. And when we talk about habitat ar architectural processes, uh, they uh, are used to uh, pa path opening and uh, plant form. And we, when we talk about the bioperturbation processes, uh, willow formation, uh, soil movement uh, through dust bathing, digging, hoof actions, and geopegy, and other uh, processes such as uh, litter production and germination facilitation is there. And but unfortunately, we know that uh, number of elephants are dying every year uh, due to the human elephant conflict. And on the other hand, uh, unfortunately, poor uh, villages in, in the rural areas in our country, particularly in dry zone, uh, are killed by the elephants. Because uh, most areas uh, that uh, form elephant habitats or range uh, within the country are close to or adjacent human settlements, uh, the, there is often conflict between animals migrating or um, foraging for food and local people. The search of effective measures to deal with human elephant conflict is one of the uh, most uh, significant uh, challenge for elephant management and uh, human elephant conflict in our country. Here you can see uh, the uh, annual uh, human deaths uh, reported uh, in between 2010 and 2019. We have conducted the research actually. In uh, uh, We uh, considered uh, the mortalities of uh, human and elephant uh, due to the human elephant conflict uh, in between 2010 and 19. And we have published uh, it as a research uh, in a uh, research uh, journal. Uh, I'll share uh, the link uh, with you later, then you can read it uh, if you are interested. Uh, in this uh, study, we found that uh, at least 81 uh, human uh, dead uh, every year due to uh, human elephant conflict. On the other hand, uh, when we consider about the elephants, uh, the annual elephant death rate uh, was about uh, 263. Here you can see that Sorry, you can see uh, 227 elephants uh, were killed in 2010, and it has increased up to 400 individuals in 2019. Very unfortunate situation in Sri Lanka. <coughs> when compare uh, with the previous decades, uh, you can see. Uh, to the, when we compare the current status with uh, two decades back, uh, it was a few 50 percent increase of human deaths and 40 percent of uh, increase uh, when compared with the previous decade. And when it comes to the elephant deaths, you, know, you can see uh, the uh, increase or the rise is very mm, mm, fearful. It was about 92% when compared with the situation uh, in uh, two decades before. And it was 31% uh, when compared with the previous decade. And in this graph, you can see the uh, divisional secretary divisions where uh, elephant deaths and human deaths are reported in between 2010 and 2016. Uh, again, you can see uh, a rise of the number of uh, divisional secretariats where uh, human and elephant deaths are reported. And then you can uh, then you can understand uh, that there is a, a huge increase of human elephant conflict in in terms of intensity as well as uh, geo geographical uh, distribution. Uh, as a mitigation measure, uh, we have uh, erect electric fences uh, every year. Uh, during the study period, we found uh, on average uh, 267 kilometers of new electric fence were uh, erected annually in uh, addition to maintenance of existing fences 
which uh, is about uh, 450, uh, 4,500 kilometers in total. And uh, annual average of uh, 10 major electric elephant drives were uh, conducted by the Department of Wildlife Conservation in, in order to mitigate human elephant conflict in Sri Lanka. Here, uh, our output uh, of uh, the map uh, where the human elephant uh, conflicts uh, is uh, recorded um, very badly. You can see uh, the, uh, the areas where human elephant uh, conflicts is reported very um, highly in uh, red color and uh, in some uh, very, uh, very, some areas less than uh, 10. Uh, that's uh, during this study period uh, in uh, yellow color. Uh, Sometimes you know that uh, Sri Lanka is the country where uh, the highest number of elephant uh, get killed uh, from human elephant conflict uh, uh, in uh, every year in the world. And uh, when it comes to the human deaths, uh, we are uh, in the second place. India is the country where uh, Elephant, I mean, humans are, uh, are being killed by uh, human elephant conflict in the world, and so we are in the second position. And uh, we better to discuss uh, why uh, human elephant conflict. As I already mentioned, told, mentioned or you earlier, uh, particularly the uh, uh, reduce, redu reduction of uh, their home range. Actually, not only the extent, uh, quality, and the quantity, um, both are uh, there. Uh, qualitative uh, reduction of the uh, home ranges and their um, habitats, as well as uh, qualitative um, uh, re uh, reduction of their home ranges, is related to the um, human elephant conflict. Uh, particularly, uh, we use these uh, elephant home ranges for the cultivations and human settlements and various development activities as well. Here you can see uh, a few photographs um, where uh, banana cultivations and uh, mining of uh, uh, soil and, and granite. And here you can see a uh, uh, reservoir bed uh, cover, uh, uh, illegally uh, made by, uh, captured by the people. Uh, in in the western in the northwestern province, uh, you know that uh, most of the uh, elephant, uh, depending on the uh, grass grown in this kind of reservoir beds uh, in dry seasons, you know uh, hundreds of elephants are gathering in uh, in area national park in dry season to uh, consume uh, the lush green grass uh, grown uh, in this kind of reservoir beds. But unfortunately. Uh, when we uh, go to the northwestern uh, province, uh, people uh, uh, use this um, kind of uh, reservoir beds for their cultivation, and uh, elephants uh, do not have access to the uh, grasses as well and the water as well. And the dense forest where elephants live are also uh, bulldozed and burned for the cultivations and development activities. Uh, most of the cases, they are long-term agricultural ventures. And these, type of, these kind of things are uh, affected to the elephant population of a country, particularly uh, elephant conservation and human elephant conflict mitigation. Then we will uh, go through uh, the mitigation strategies uh, where what we have used uh, during the previous uh, decades. And uh, we will uh, discuss uh, what are the uh, pros and cons of these mitigation measures. Here you can see a map uh, on your right hand side. It is the map uh, uh, proposed by uh, uh, ex an expert committee in 1959 uh, to uh, mitigate human elephant conflict in Sri Lanka and conserve elephants. They plan to uh, drive the elephants uh, from different areas to uh, these blue color temporary corridors to the uh, network of uh, protected areas linked with the permanent corridors. Uh, you can see uh, Vilpatu National Park uh, and uh, Yala National Park, like national parks are there, Min area likewise. Then uh, 
we plan to uh, confine uh, the elephants living across the uh, in across the uh, dry dry zone uh, to this uh, uh, this very small uh, portion of their uh, habitats into uh, 1959 but uh, with the uh, with the research, latest uh, research findings we know that uh, elephants love very much to their home ranges and then we can't uh, evacuate or we can't um, remove them from, from their uh, home ranges. If we try to do that, uh, it is uh, badly effect, effect to the uh, elephant uh, conservation and human elephant conflict as well. Here you can see uh, area in um, uh, south, down south. Uh, you can uh, imagine uh, where is this this is actually uh, in Hambantot area. Here you can see the Matala airport uh, in red color. And uh, here the dots are represented uh, by the herds, female herds actually. You can see how much of uh, elephants are there, uh, how, much, uh, how, how much of uh, elephants are there and intensity of their um, use of this particular piece of land. And unfortunately, uh, with the development activities in this particular area uh, for, the, uh, for the construction of uh, airport and other infrastructure development, uh, we uh, have driven these elephants uh, in number about uh, 300, more than 300 elephants have been uh, uh, driven to the um, nearest uh, national park called Lumukambiara National Park. Here you can see uh, this uh, uh, large number of elephants uh, have been driven uh, to the uh, Lunukamber National Park. Uh, here on your um, right side, Lunukamber National Park is there. Uh, on your left side, uh, this is the area where uh, that uh, elephant were inhibited previously. And uh, this is the area where they live. This is the National Park, uh, Lunugambeer National Park that we are talking about. Here you can see hundreds of uh, wildlife officers uh, are, uh, were happy uh, after uh, the uh, finish of the uh, months and months uh, of uh, drive uh, and they have used this kind of uh, huge uh, vehicles uh, and uh, guns, uh, fire and uh, noises as well. But uh, after uh, years, of this uh, this uh, elephant drive here you can see the elephants uh, driven to the Lunugambera National Park here uh, actually Lunugambera National Park is uh, quite a big uh, national park in our country but uh, uh, this uh, the elephants uh, driven to the national park uh, are were there in very uh, small area uh, in uh, inside the national park uh, on the side they they have entered to the national park uh, we we uh, we thought that they uh, they will explore further to, uh, towards the inside of the national park and find new areas uh, for their living but unfortunately it was not happened uh, they have limited to this kind of very limited area and they exploit uh, the resources in this limited area uh, and they uh, uh, they were died uh, from starvation very unfortunately. And therefore, uh, you can understand that this, uh, this elephant drives are not uh, suitable or ineffective for the human elephant conflict mitigation in our country. Here is another example. Uh, we know that uh, we uh, use this kind of elephant drives for the uh, mitigation in terms of mitigation of human elephant conflict. But unfortunately, uh, herds consist of females and uh, children are subject to, subject to this kind of drives. Here you can see in, in September, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a drive organized by the Department of Wildlife Conservation uh, to uh, drive this elephant to the, uh, this uh, wildlife protected area from Kotavahera. Uh, to uh, uh, Ingrimitia uh, area. Uh, this is uh, the uh, this is the uh, home range uh, where this elephant herd live. And uh, when uh, when the 
drive start uh, they were uh, there and here you can see from the green light the drive took place and they were driven to the uh, the top more part of the uh, their home range uh, in galgamu area in uh, in in orange color you can see a bull elephant uh, mainly uh, they are the 100% of the uh, human elephant conflict uh, are uh, due to the male elephants. Here you can see a male uh, with the, that herd. Uh, with the time, uh, the, the, the elephant uh, drive happened. You can see uh, this uh, bull elephant move towards the um, Ambampol area. Uh, they, they, he tried to evacuate from the drive and drive has taken place here. And after the drive, the male elephant came back again uh, to the uh, previous area. Then again, uh, the human elephant conflict was there. Then you can understand uh, it is not uh, effective um, for human elephant conflict mitigation in Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, today itself, they are uh, uh, using this kind of elephant drives uh, in order to mitigate human elephant conflict without considering these scientific evidences. And what is the ultimate result of uh, this kind of elephant drives? Uh, but uh, during the drives, uh, they are um, the young, uh, very uh, baby elephants are uh, subjected to, uh, they, are, they are tired, they are thirsty, and they are hungry during uh, this kind of long-term um, uh, drives and they uh, get killed. After uh, confining these elephants into a uh, wildlife protected area, again, uh, they are suffering from lack of food and they are uh, dying uh, every year. Uh, this elephant, uh, sometimes most of the people, uh, most, of the, most of you guys uh, have been visited Yala National Park in our country, which is uh, a very common uh, national park among the wildlife enthusiasts. But unfortunately, this, uh, this elephant uh, uh, death was reported in National Park. Uh, not This is not the only one. In each and every year uh, in dry season, uh, you can find this kind of elephant deaths in Yara National Park because uh, elephants uh, lived in uh, uh, around the National Park in forest department areas around the National Parks uh, were confined uh, to the Yara National Park using this kind of uh, drive. And after that, uh, the uh, capacity or the carrying capacity of the national park was exceeded and uh, each and every year this kind of elephant babies are killed by the, this unkind, uh, this uh, uh, very ineffective and useless elephant drives or the human elephant conflict mitigation measures. Uh, then let me uh, talk about uh, a little bit about uh, the uh, carrying capacity, uh, you can see uh, a wooden uh, barrel with water uh, and uh, you can see uh, there are uh, uh, slats with different uh, amount, different lengths are there. Uh, you know the, the, low, the shortest uh, slat determine the amount of water, water that uh, can be uh, 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 kept uh, in this barrel. If we increase the if we increase the length of this uh, shortest uh, slat to up to some extent, then again another slat uh, become a minimum, uh, become a margin uh, to uh, the amount uh, that we can uh, put uh, into into this barrel. Likewise, uh, if this uh, barrel is like a national park, if uh, water is like elephants, uh, there are um, different different. Uh, uh, slats, uh, slats or the uh, different kind of uh, the things uh, that, to, that should be considered uh, in order to uh, determine the human, uh, determine the uh, carrying capacity. For instance, it can be water, it can be food, it can be space, and sometimes uh, the, the, the complex uh, socio-economic uh, conditions that we don't know at the moment. 
but we don't consider these things uh, and we just uh, try to uh, drive the elephants uh, from uh, surrounding areas to this kind of very uh, narrow or small protected area and confine them by the electric fences and uh, we uh, hope they will be there and uh, that is the solution for human elephant conflict but actually it is not then we used uh, elephant translocation for uh, mitigation of human elephant conflict in sri lanka uh, during uh, decades but actually now we stopped it uh, due to uh, the ineffectiveness of this uh, practice uh, we in uh, elephant translocation uh, we uh, try to uh, we try, try to say, select uh, some uh, animals or problem causing I mean, animals and we capture them from uh, their home range and they, we transport them by a lorry uh, to a uh, national park uh, from uh, far away from their original home range. But uh, researchers uh, have conducted by different authors found that they, uh, they uh, came back to their original home range. Sometimes they uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they come from, came from about 200 to 300 kilometers uh, from their new, new location to their uh, original home range. And on the other hand, uh, when the you know, translocation is going on, this kind of uh, tra tragedies uh, could be happen. Here you can see the uh, um, very nice uh, Tusker lived in, uh, Galgamu area, northwestern province. Uh, it is called Siemalangamwe Raja. Uh, this animal was uh, captured uh, for the uh, uh, translocation purposes uh, because uh, people uh, claimed this uh, animal uh, destroyed their houses and uh, their paddy fields and um, threatened to the uh, lives. Then the uh, Department of Wildlife Conservation captured this uh, majestic animal and tried to uh, translocate uh, this animal, but unfortunately, during the translocation on the way, uh, it was uh, uh, died by an accident. Then this kind of uh, things happen due to uh, translocation purpose and um, processes. Then you, then we uh, thought uh, if we can uh, put these kind of problematic animals to a certain area called elephant holding ground, it would be the uh, it would be uh, the uh, solution for human elephant conflict in Sri Lanka. Then we have it, uh, we have uh, uh, constructed um, such an open prison. I would like to inter, inter, in, uh, call it uh, open prison, not a holding ground or rehabilitation center. Uh, they have uh, started this kind of uh, holding ground or open prison for elephants in Horo Patan area. And during the last uh, uh, decades, uh, they have uh, uh, sent uh, hundreds of elephant uh, elephants to this elephant holding route, but unfortunately, most of the uh, elephants uh, flee from this uh, in this uh, area, and uh, some of them have been died from starvation. Very unfortunately, here you, uh, this is another uh, example uh, for the ineffectiveness of uh, such uh, holding grounds. Here, this is uh, the one um, tusks uh, elephant called Chandi in uh, in uh, in Galgamu area, and uh, it was uh, transported to the Nunugam uh, Oropatan holding ground. And uh, after uh, some time, uh, it has uh, come back to his uh, original home range in uh, Galgamu area. Here, you can see. Uh, how this animal uh, came back to the uh, came back to his uh, settle his uh, home range within very short period of time and uh, finally uh, uh, the department of uh, audit uh, of the government uh, they have published a report uh, about the ineffectiveness of the uh, horopatana elephant holding ground uh, it clearly mentioned uh, that uh, this kind of uh, holding grounds are useless in terms of uh, human elephant conflict mitigation as well as uh, human elephant uh, conservation. 
here you know you can see uh, task, another tusker uh, kept uh, at the horopatan holding ground called kalladi uh, dalakota uh, it was uh, uh, unfortunately it was night died recently due to starvation inside this horopatana uh, elephant holding ground and uh, finally uh, electric fences are also uh, actually it is the uh, most common uh, human elephant mitigation measure used in sri lanka uh, we erect electric fence uh, to uh, control or uh, to uh, uh, control the elephants uh, to coming to the uh, developed areas by the uh, human. But unfortunately, you can see uh, this uh, uh, this electric fence. Uh, elephants are they are in the either sides of the fence. If this uh, electric fence is effective, uh, the elephants should be one side of the uh, electric fence and human should be the another in another side of the electric fence. Unfortunately, you can see uh, in either sides uh, elephants are there. Uh, here you can uh, see uh, in a satellite image uh, how this kind of electric fences are ineffective. Most of the cases uh, in Sri Lanka, we try to uh, confine uh, elephants uh, to the provider protected area uh, using this kind of electric fences. Uh, and it is not practical. Uh, here you can see elephant, these uh, red dots and uh, blue dots are represented by uh, herds, these green dots as well. Uh, here uh, the elephant herd outside the, uh, outside the protected area uh, can't come into the protected area due to this electric fence. Then it is, uh, uh, it is uh, not good for uh, elephant conservation and in terms of human elephant conflict as well. But uh, here you can see uh, see some green dots uh, represented by bull elephant. It uh, can go. It is the the electric fence don't create any barrier. Uh, this bull elephant they can uh, roam in uh, either side of the electric fence uh, without any hesitation. Uh, you, therefore, you can see there's no uh, use of uh, this kind of electric fences for uh, the human elephant conflict mitigation. And here you can uh, see uh, the typical structure of uh, electric fences uh, used nowadays. Uh, we have wildlife protected areas there, and then elephants are there, and we try to erect ele electric fences along the boundaries of uh, wildlife protected areas. But uh, Outside the wildlife protected areas, you can find some forest areas. Sometimes they are belong to forest department. Uh, elephants are there also. And then uh, the elephants uh, come into the, uh, there's no any barrier in between this forest area and the de developed area. And elephants can easily enter to the developed areas and uh, they, can, uh, they can destroy uh, the cultivations, human settlements and lives of the uh, human. Therefore, we propose uh, to erect, uh, erect electric fences uh, in this way. Here you can see clearly uh, uh, in between the boundaries of developed areas and uh, elephant habitats. If we can erect uh, this kind of uh, electric fences in between uh, this, uh, in, the, in this kind of border lines, uh, it would be uh, much uh, effective uh, in, a, in order to address human elephant conflict. Actually, uh, we are practiced, uh, Dr. Prithiraj Fernando and their research team uh, used use this kind of electric fences uh, in a number of areas in Sri Lanka, and they uh, show very success. Uh, they, they show that they are very successful in uh, human elephant conflict mitigation. And finally, uh, we uh, in 2020, a uh, uh, team of uh, eminent researchers uh, and department heads related to the human elephant conflict uh, sat on a table, uh, sat around a table and found uh, they have pre prepared a national action plan for the mitigation of human elephant conflict in Sri Lanka. And it was submitted to the uh, president, uh, His Excellency President, in December to, uh, 2020. 
uh, it uh, create a good uh, pathways uh, it uh, it is uh, good actually a very nice section plan and it, in terms of mitigation of human elephant conflict but unfortunately uh, it was not uh, implemented uh, to date uh, if we can uh, demand uh, to uh, uh, implement this national action plan it would it would be a, a better uh, it would be better uh, in order to reduce human deaths as well as uh, elephant deaths in our country and reduce the human elephant conflict in our country then i'll uh, wish to uh, talk a little bit about elephant smuggling in sri lanka as well uh, here you can see a very uh, baby elephants, very tiny, very poor uh, ele baby elephants in Sri Lanka are being smuggled by uh, uh, very organized smuggling records in our country, uh, organized with uh, politicians and sometimes religious leaders, uh, sometimes businessmen uh, like uh, vice uh, different uh, strong and powerful figures in the country. They are organized very well in order to smuggle elephant from the wild. Most of the cases, these kind of elephants are, are smuggled by killing their mothers. And uh, you know, it is, uh, we can't accept uh, on any reason, uh, this kind of very brutal uh, smuggling uh, incidents in our country. But there are, there are uh, uh, in our study uh, published into uh, last year, uh, we found about 55 uh, cases of uh, uh, elephant smuggling uh, incidents uh, in Sri Lanka, but uh, unfortunately, uh, no one uh, was, uh, there was no uh, legislation or the legal, or uh, there was no one was punished to date uh, for this smuggling issues. Here you can see uh, the distribution of uh, smuggling elephants. Uh, where and here you, you can see most of the uh, most of the elephants uh, or these baby elephants were captured from Colombo and uh, suburbs, uh, where elephants are actually don't uh, uh, they are don't they don't they do not uh, live there. And here are the areas where elephants uh, live uh, actually. You can see uh, these smuggling records uh, capture these kind of poor elephants from the, their home ranges and they transport these elephants to the elephant Colombo and suburbs. And uh, these, uh, uh, this is actually a lucrative business uh, to now, to date, uh, without any hesitation by uh, uh, people uh, enforcing law or, or the uh, no, no, no challenge. There's no challenge to this kind of uh, smuggling records uh, in our country. It is very pathetic situation actually. When we uh, when we talk uh, when we go through their registration documents, uh, you can see uh, they uh, they the according to the registration documents, their ages are in uh, white uh, columns. But uh, when we estimate their ages you can see uh, their estimated estimated ages are in uh, black columns here you can see uh, they, uh, the people uh, put uh, uh, wrong ages for uh, registration purposes and but still they are very uh, young uh, or very uh, children or uh, very uh, babies uh, in very young ages and that's that's the end of my presentation. I think uh, you have be, you have enjoyed uh, it and um, get an idea. Uh, finally, uh, I wish to talk uh, what we can do uh, to conserve elephants. Actually, uh, after listening uh, to this uh, uh, this presentation, uh, you now you can uh, you can have an idea about uh, what you can do uh, to conserve elephants. And in my uh, side, I think uh, we should be aware, um, we should be informed, uh, we should be in sensitive uh, to this kind of things and we should be active and really participate uh, in uh, different uh, situations. For instance, we can act against uh, this kind of smuggling. Uh, we can be aware uh, of the uh, human elephant conflict. We can uh, sensitive uh, towards their needs 
uh, we can active when uh, if the people are trying to uh, destroy forest or elephant habitats we can actively uh, participate against uh, this kind of deforestation and habitat loss of elephants like things that are the things uh, that i uh, can um, focus on in nutshell uh, uh, what we can do to conserve elephants thank you very much for your attention hope you uh, have had uh, some uh, input, some information from this presentation. If you need to uh, contact me for uh, more information, uh, you can use this mobile number, email address, and uh, the social media platforms uh, for uh, uh, connect with me and uh, get the information. Thank you very much once again.